Hi everyone, my name is Selena. Thanks for coming back to my channel. Um, today I'm going to share with you all the things that I own that are Jane Austen related for the Jane Austen July reading, celebration, extravaganza. I'm not quite sure what to call it, but um, I'll leave a link to a video that has like prompts and fun read-alongs that are happening for the month of July. I'm, I'm trying to participate in that and I've finished one book called Pride, Prejudice, and Other Flavors, which I absolutely loved. I got through it in like one day, um, like staying up well into the night. And then I have already watched one Jane Austen movie, the 1996, 95 version of Sens Sensibility with Emma Thompson um, and Hugh Grant and Kate Winslet. So I watched that version already and I'm almost finished with reading Mance of the Park. But so I'll wrap up all of that um, at the end of the month. But right now I'm just going to share with you the things that I own that are Jane Austen related um, that has fueled my love, my obsession with all things Jane Austen. Um, I've been in love with Austen since like high school. I don't know how, but somehow I discovered her around 11th or 12th grade. And I think that's when most people discover Pride and Prejudice. Um, and yeah, it was all downhill from there. It was... It was Bridget Jones's Diary, now that I recall. Yes, Bridget Jones's Diary, and then learning that it was a modern adaptation of Pride and Prejudice, and then that led me to Jane Austen, and yes, so it's been a love affair ever since then. But okay, so the first thing I own, um, Jane Austen related, it's not even a book or a movie, but it's this little figurine, this action figure, um, and I have had it for quite some time, so long that I've lost the accessories that have gone with it. Uh, it came with a writing table, uh, famously, her father had given her a writing table, and I think this writing table is now at the British Museum or the British Library. Um, she she wrote most of her or a lot of her uh, novels on this writing table. It came with that. That is no longer uh, part of this uh, action figure, unfortunately. I've lost it. And it also, the hand had a quill that was attached right here, and I no longer have that either. It has broken off. But the doll still remains. So I have that. Then moving on to some movies, I have the Sense the Sense Sensibility version that I watched, like I mentioned before. Um, this character, I'm sorry, this book has one of my most favorite uh, portrayals of a character. I love Ellen Rickman's Colonel Brandon. He will always, forever be my Colonel Brandon. Um, I just love the way that he depicted this character. Um, so this is one movie I own. Then I also have. Clueless, which is great. I think it's getting a bit of a resurgence because Old Things 90 is in vogue. Um, but I love this adaptation of Emma. Emma typically tends to be my least favorite Jane Austen novel, uh, but I do enjoy watching this movie. I think it's great. And plus, the lovely Donald Faison does not hurt. Um, and then this version of Pride and Prejudice with Keira Knightley, which is not my favorite. Um, it does have some redeeming qualities. Sorry, there was lots of glare on that, I think. It does have some redeeming qualities to it, but it's, again, not necessarily my favorite um, version of Pride and Prejudice. Then I own my favorite version of Pride and Prejudice in this beautiful 10th anniversary set. Um, and in this set, it comes with... The, the movies, which are in this little case right here. And then I have this um, like making of book and it has images and kind of behind the scenes stories and whatnots. And so this is fun for me at least to just kind of read through every once in a while when I'm rewatching Pride and Prejudice. Let's see if I can put it back. Whoa, I did it quicker than I thought. And then now I'm gonna move on to books that I own that weren't written by Jane Austen, but are about Jane Austen or adaptations. And so the first one is this Jane Austen, a companion. It's a biography of Jane Austen, but it's also more than that. It's like a history. So it talks about not just the Napoleonic Wars, but the slave trade, issues with sugar, manufacturing. Um, in the North, you have the industrial uh, boom happening and how all of that um, it can affect or has affected Jane Austen and her writing. Um, so I really enjoy it. Oh, the writing table that I mentioned is actually on the cover of this book. So that's that. Next is something that I'm really excited about, uh, Pride by Evie Zaboy. She calls it a Pride and Prejudice remix. It's a modern retelling of Pride and Prejudice. It takes place in the Bronx around like 2016, 2017, around there. Um, it has black and brown characters in it that are in the lead. Um, 
it is YA, so if you are not a fan of YA, you might not find this enjoyable, but um, it does also hit all of the uh, Pride and Prejudice beats as well. And I had my students read this last year in a little mini Jane Austen Pride and Prejudice unit. It was great. We read Pride, then they saw Bride and Prejudice by Garenda Charter, and then they went to a production of Pride and Prejudice, a local theater was putting it on as a stage performance. And so they got to see it in three different adaptations, three different forms. Great time. I really enjoyed that unit. Then uh, for the brief time that I was part of the JASNA um, group, there was, I uh, mean, JASNA stands for Jane Austen Society in North America, by the way, um, and each kind of locality has their own little JASNA group. And so when I was in New York, I was part of JASNA for um, New York, and this is a publication that they give out. It's called Persuasion, and inside it's like essays, poems, uh, short writings, uh, all things Jane Austen related, and I only was able to get one copy of it, and I probably will never give it away just because it's very, very nostalgic of the time that I spent with those lovely, lovely women in that group. Next is one of my favorite adaptations um, of anything Jane Austen. It's Austen Land by Shannon Hale. Yeah, Shannon Hale. Um, the movie does not do it justice. I'm so sorry that this is a movie promo cover, but the book is so good. I was surprised how much I really enjoyed it, this book. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed this story. It's about a woman who is in love with all things Austin and how that has negatively affected her life um, and has led her to a place where she kind of, you know, like how people who love Harry Potter, me, travel and spend gobs and gobs of money to go to like the Wizarding World or Harry Potter at Universal Studios. There's a place like that for Austin fans in this book. Um, and so she goes there hoping to kind of live out her Austin fantasies. Um, it's so much fun. Surprisingly good read. Next up is the Jane Austen Book Club. Um, again, I enjoyed the book more than I enjoyed the movie, but um, compared to like Austin Land, I did not enjoy this as much, but it's still a great read. It follows several women um, and men as they read through the major six works of Austin and how that kind of affects their, their life. And now that I think about it, if you are fans of Harry Potter and the Sacred Text, it's kind of like that. It's reading Austin. It's how when, when people read Austin seriously and let it inform and make them into better people. It's similar to what you got or what you listen to in the podcast of Harry Potter, a sacred text is what's happening here. It's these women going through Austin, the Austin canon, and then using it to better understand their situations and their lives and who they are as people moving through the world. Um, next is the book that got me, like I mentioned earlier, into Jane Austen. It's Bridget Jones's Diary. Again, this is a movie tie-in cover because I actually saw the movie first before I read the book. Uh, but I still enjoy the book very much. And it's this is a t retelling of Pride and Prejudice. Um, it is done with like letters, um, no, sorry, not letters, sorry, journal entries, which is fun. Um, I think we all know the story of Bridget Jones, and so I don't want to spend too much time talking about that. I also have Bridget Jones, The Edge of Reason, and I think this was supposed to be a re, um, like um, a persuasion adaptation. I think the were, were, author was trying to adapt another Jane Austen, but I'm not 100% sure of which one that was. But I did enjoy Bridget Jones, The Edge of Reason as as well. Um, didn't like it as well as the first, but there were some clear, like, like awesome laugh out loud moments that are just, if you're reading on a bus or something like that, just beware. Next is a fun little trinket that I picked up. I don't know we even know where. It's this, isn't this? I remember where. I picked it up at the Strand. Here we go. Um, so it's this cute little like keepsake box with these awesome like folksy interpretations of Elizabeth and Darcy. And then you open it up and it looks like this. And inside is, let me see if I'm tilting this right. Uh, you get a, like a board book, a children's board book version of, there we go, of Pride and Prejudice. And then you get these 
cardboard figurines and you can kind of create a whole like Austin scene and so this one right here is Pimbley. I'm not gonna take them all out uh, but this is just cute and fun maybe one day if I ever get my own home I'll set it up somewhere permanent and it'll stay forever okay now next you're gonna travel with me over here to my shelf because I have basically a shelf of Jane Austen books and I have multiple copies of her six novels is just the way life is for me. So first up is the Emma Thompson screenplay of Sense of Sense and Sensibility. Yes, I love it that much. Um, and it is the screenplay of it. And it has some really cool pictures of like movies and stuff like that. I absolutely adore this. It's uh, screenplays and diaries. Okay, then next up, I'm going to show them both at the same time. I have these Barnes & Noble editions of, um, oops, there we go, Pride and Prejudice and Mansfield Park. Um, I just love the covers of them. I like kind of like the heftiness that they had, um, and they weren't that expensive. So I have these copies. They're well marked. Uh, there's still a bookmark in this one where I probably has started and then stopped. And they have there's some bookmarking in this one. I also loved the kind of deckled edges of this edition. I only own, I only own one copy of Sanditon, which is Jane Austen's last novel. She never quite finished it, uh, but this one is finished. So it's, I like how the person who finished it just left herself um, anonymous by just referring to herself as um, a lady, which is, an, which is, Harkening back to Jane Austen when she was, was first published, it was just attributed to a lady. So I like that. It's Jane Austen and another lady. <laughs> um, Sanditon is about like a seaside resort and uh, there's lots of issues with illness. And I think that was harkening to her time dealing with what some people thought she had was Addison's disease, um, which um, maybe was the cause of her death. Um, at such a young age. I think she died at like 41 or 42 years old. Um, but yeah, this Sanditon takes place at like a seaside resort. It was meant to be a place for people to to cure their whatever ails them. Then I got the annotated versions of Sensibility and Pride and Prejudice, which are awesome. They come with tons of notes and uh, references on the inside with like images and footnotes and notes at the end of of the novel, I'm sorry, the notes at the end of, at the end of each chapter. Um, they're just great to have, especially when I started to read Jane Austen um, at the university level and needed to have certain information at hand. It was easy to obtain that information because I had those editions. Then I have another Barnes & Noble version of Mansfield Park. Uh, Mansfield Park is Probably my favorite Jane Austen novel, which is not uh, the true of every Austen fan, but I have this version of Mansfield Park, which I've written and I've written all I've written in all of my Jane Austens, but this one has lots of notes and annotations in it. Then I got this version of Pride and Prejudice, which is like a textbook version of Pride and Prejudice, so it has some things in it for students. And this is when I thought I might teach Jane Austen um, a long, long time ago. I had questions and in-depth reading questions and um, test questions and things like that inside of it as well. Um, and then I tried to do something I saw a lot of other people do, which is like here, like the found poetry or erasure poetry. So I was trying to get into to that and I used this edition for that, but I never finished out. My hope was to read the page and then draw on it, read the page and draw on it. We'll see, maybe I'll get back to that. This is gonna be a very long video, guys, and I'm sorry. Um, then I have The Youngest Mrs. Ward, uh, which is a story about j the mother of Fanny Price in Mansfield Park, about the situation that got her to the point where she needed to reach out to her sisters to help her take care of her children. Um, and Joan Aiken has written a couple of other, um, like Jane, Jane Austen companion stories. Um, and I think the one that I remember reading that I liked a lot was, put this back, was the one that she wrote about 
um, Jane Fairfax from Emma. Okay, I have some dishes that aren't really exciting. I have another um, Sense Sensibility and then another Mansfield Park because I just can't get enough of Mansfield Park. And then we have um, the Watsons, which is, oh, the Watsons and Emma Watson, sorry, is a collection of Jane Austen's novellas or juvenilia. Um, this edition of North Anchor Abbey, which is another Barnes & Noble edition. And then I have this really, really beautiful edition of Persuasion, which is probably my second favorite Jane Austen novel. And it's just fun to touch um, these words that you see in blue are actually kind of like stamped in or embossed in. And so is the back. It's just gorgeous. I love the feel of it. I just want to touch it all the time. Then I have the things that I mentioned I was going to be reading for this month. I have this edition of Mansfield Park, which I already showed in a previous video. And then I have Jane Austen's History. It's the History of the English, uh, sorry, History of England, excuse me, by Jane Austen that she wrote um, as a young girl. We're almost at the end, folks. Almost at the end. Then I have these, again from Barnes & Noble, but these really cool, like, pocket size editions of of was it Northanger Abbey Persuasion in Mansfield Park and they have like the gold foiled on the outside they have like bookmarks here they're just beautiful flip them in a pocket I take I, I would take them everywhere when I was um, still living in New York and they would just fit into a purse and anytime socializing was just too much for me I would went out find a corner start reading okay then I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly I have a collection of her juvenilia um, I have another copy of, Pers of Pride and Prejudice. This is the one that I've had the longest. It has all most notes in it, most writing annotations, but this is my longest held copy of a Jane Austen. It's this one right here. Then I have this edition of, of Emma. Um, this edition of Persuasion, which I love. I just keep coming back to it, and I guess this is where I left off at the last time that I was here, but my copy of Persuasion. Then I have some fun things. Again, I got it from Barnes & Noble. Um, it's just like trinkety books, but uh, Jane Austen's little advice book, which is fun. It's just little quippy, quippy sayings of hers. And last but not least is the Jane Austen handbook. And, oops, bookmark fell out. <laughs> um, it just has some of the kind of things that she says, kind of like the advice book, but um, what was courting like, or how to set up a table for a Regency dinner party, um, how to ride, here, this one's about how to ride side saddle. So, I have one other book that I couldn't find, but it's okay, this video is too long. We're done. Those are all my Jane Austen things. I hope you enjoyed that. Bye.